Time now to talk all things media and as always joined by James Manning, editor and publisher of Media Week. Lots going on. There's always lots going on in the media space, but a couple of big AGMs uh, earlier this week, nine and seven. Yeah, look, they're not always fonts, they're not always that newsworthy AGMs, but lots of interest around um, nine in particular. Yeah. Um, Hugh Marks and Peter Costello were up there, um, Chairman Costello, of course, uh, Hugh Marks, ready to lead nine into the new nine. Uh, we've got the sh uh, shareholders vote from Fairfax Media shareholders on Monday. Expect and what's the expectation there, that it goes through? Yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. And then, you know, th there will be some opposition, but, you know, it's not expected to, um, to stymie yet. Then the uh, tick from, I think, a federal court mm. um, after that, then they're ready to trade. And um, as um, Hugh Marks was quoted, we want to hit the ground running. Um, before the end of the year. They've got uh, a team at Nine working behind the scenes. Before the with, end of the year? Yeah. with Well, yeah, they'll be trading as the new Nine, I think, from the second Monday in mm. December. That's, so they'll be listed. So they'll be... They've got, they'll have to look like... Wow, that's busy. That's what they're doing because those shares have been under a fair bit of pressure. So um, when they're trading just as one, they won't want to see that uh, pull back any further. But he revealed, you know, they got the new Nine will have four divisions. There'll be our broadcasting. There's going to be domain video on demand which will include stan and nine now and then the whole publishing which will be all the existing nine publishing assets digital in with all the fairfax um oh, hard right. copy and um and their um digital assets too um a quick thought on seven i, I did read uh, some comments from uh from um uh, Kerry Stokes, Kerry Stokes, Kerry yeah. Stokes uh, you know, saying that Nines had a really good show called Married at First Sight, and he did think that um, the Nine Fairfax deal was a little bit like getting married at first sight. <laughs> it was a great line. Yeah, yeah, it was. I've not was. done it justice, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, big focus on costs there at Seven. Um, they don't think the TV market, the ad revenue, will grow a lot next year. They think it will probably be pretty flat, but they think they can increase their share, so to take a bit of money off some of the others. But yeah, big focus on costs. That's another way they can, you know, increase their their profit. I guess they get those costs down. So he and a CEO. Tim Warner both spoke to that and gave quite a bit of detail. And speaking of TV, we'll do the ratings a little bit later. We're going to move on now because Australia's top news website this week unveiled a new homepage redesigned to evolve the news.com.au brand into the next decade. With more updates planned across the next six months and to talk us through the brand's 2019 strategy is news.com.au General Manager Melissa Overman. Melissa, thanks very much for coming in and joining us today. Um, why do it? And is it dangerous? Do, do, you know, do, do readers, viewers kind of not like change? I think you're actually right on the money there. They don't like change, which is why I think uh, this refresh that we call it is an evolution, not a revolution. <laughs> uh, and it's something we haven't done for many years because um, if it's not broke, why fix it, mm. right? It's uh, been an incredibly high performing product for many years. So this was more, I guess, a, a tweak for us. It was ensuring that we really had a premium reader experience and then also ensuring that we were offering our advertising clients um, some fantastic um, ad formats. And we think we've really done this um, in a cleaner, fresher design without too much of a change. So the, the response from readers has been incredibly positive, which is always oh, good. good. <laughs> Melissa, tell us about homepages, and in particular for news.com.au. You hear people say that with the rise of social and that, there's lots of ways into a mm. website, now, not so much through the homepage. But is that does that apply to you or are you a bit different? We are a bit different, actually, I would say. Um, the news.com to do homepage is an incredible powerhouse and it always has been. About a third of our readers come to the homepage every day for their news. How many, sorry? A third of our readers. And when you consider that news.com.au's overall audience is 9.8 million, as it was in the latest Nielsen figures for October, that is a lot of people coming to us every day for their news. So, you know, we've got a whole team of people that really focus on that homepage every day so we want to make sure that we are first with the breaking news that all of the content is incredibly discoverable that we have all of the content that people expect us to have in the places that they expect it to be which is actually incredibly important too and that you know we are sort of monitoring that homepage all the time to ensure that we're responding to you know our, our consumers um, wants and needs so yes um, it is an incredibly important destination for us sure people do come through social and search but I think you are actually seeing those traffic sources drop off a little bit now people are wanting to come direct to the source and so we sort of saw this as the perfect time to make sure we were reinvesting in our products and as we said this is the first in a uh, you know an evolving sort of um, product program for us so how does it work I mean you, 
considering a readership of that size, as, mm. as you just made mention, almost 10 million, um, is it a lengthy process? Is there beta testing? We just make a couple of, you know, a couple of changes on a Sunday night so it's ready to go on a Monday. <laughs> I mean, how does it, how does it work? I wish it was that easy. <laughs> no, look, uh, a lot of testing went into this. Um, we, we had lots of learnings already because we're always monitoring what our consumers do on the homepage and all through the site. So we took those learnings and then we actually sort of created, if you will, um, three different homepages and then oh. we tested those live. So 20% of our audience at any given time on certain days saw or a different homepage. Mm -hmm. So we actually had those live learnings, then they fed back to us, and then we qualified those learnings um, in focus groups. So we actually understood what people were doing and then why they were doing it. And so then we landed on, I guess if you want to say for want of a better word, the winner. <laughs> and that's the uh, that's the homepage that you see now. But we are still going to be doing tweaks and tests um, ongoing on this homepage as well. So it's never just a stagnant product. We are always looking at how we can improve Well, the other things. two just sort of sent home in a limousine without a rose. <laughs> they just sort of, <laughs> they're sort of on their way wallowing on a beach somewhere. Absolutely. Yes, they've been um, confined to the scrap heap somewhere, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm loving these insights into how you did it. Tell, do you still need to worry things about like width of the, the screen to, to allow for people on, I don't know, older computers or who haven't got big screens and things like this, the time it takes to load? Do you? For people, do some people still have poor connections? Absolutely, and our page load is actually faster with this new version, so that is one of the things that we did do. Um, but yes, look, we tested across multiple devices, multiple people of all age groups, because when you look at the news.com.au demographic, we cover a gamut of people. Mm. So, you know, all age groups, um, all genders, all areas in the country, it's a really wide audience, so we have to make sure we're appealing to all of those people. Considering that wider audience, I mean, where are you seeing some of the, the real demands? What do people want? Is it more more videos? Is it more photos? I mean, what is it just the, the breaking news? What are you seeing the biggest sort of demand for? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I think that uh, breaking news will always be what news.com.au is, is known for and, um, you know, what we do particularly well. But we've seen a real rise this year, especially in people searching for finance content and coming yeah. to us first for that. So um, consumer information, also property information, obviously it's reflective of the culture at the time. Um, politics has been very popular for us this year and is something that uh, we're seeing a lot of traffic growth come out of. So uh, the Wentworth by-election recently, even though that was a local story, it had federal implications, so that was really strong for us. We've actually bolstered our Canberra Bureau um, as a result of that um, to cover more federal politics. Um, equally, sport has been really big this year. So the Melbourne Cup that we've just had was our third biggest day of audience traffic ever. Uh, so, you know, that is something that is growing. NRL, AFL, cricket obviously coming up. These are all things we're focusing on. And then, of course, we've also got entertainment and lifestyle, which have always done really well for us. But it's great to see that when big news stories break and, and you know, really meaty stories, mm. that people are getting their news from news.com.au. You, you, how far do you need to plan ahead? I mean, we're going to have an election next year, mm -hmm. so have you already got somebody sort of working on your strategy there? Yes, we have multiple people working <laughs> on that, I hope, because it's obviously going to be really huge for us. Uh, look, we, we plan, but we also are really agile. I think you have to be in the news today. Um, we've got a newsroom up there of, you know, sort of over 70 amazing journalists who know how to cover live and breaking news better than anybody in this country, I would argue. So I think that uh, in the digital world you can plan, but you also have to be ready to um, change as, as things sort of get thrown at you. Is there a difficult balance between content and advertising that you, I mean, you sort of talk about uh, tailoring it to what uh, the user wants, but also being able to provide opportunities for the advertiser? I mean, is that an ongoing balance, trying to not have one overload the other? Yeah, it is. And interestingly, in the research that we did and the testing that we did, we found that uh, consumers are not adverse to ads. They're mm. actually not. If they're done in a way that doesn't distract them from the content, if they're contextual, uh, if they load quickly, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So people, I think, in this day and age, understand that you know we have to pay for great content so they're not adverse to to add units equally you know the news native networks product has been really huge for us and that's another i guess um, way that we're sort of evolving um, that relationship people again don't mind um, being given sort of content that is uh, from advertisers as long as it's relevant to them so yes we are you know trying to strike that delicate balance but i think that um 
it's actually getting better the relationship that consumers have with advertisers and it's really nice that we're sort of in the middle of that and able to provide that and hopefully with this new homepage redesign that's what we've sort of done is I guess clean up and, and provide a sort of more um, uncluttered environment for a lot of these things and just present people the you know the content that they want no matter sort of where that is. All right Melissa do appreciate you joining us this afternoon thank you very much. Anytime. Um, flagged it before time for ratings television ratings we'll kick off with um, free to air this is for week 45 and taking out the top spot probably no surprise and big day for news.com big day for seven Melbourne Cup yeah look uh, did very well yeah massive massive number seven's last cup of course because the rights go to, to 10, ten from next year Isn't like some sort of uh, strategy to make sure Bruce McAvaney has nothing to do with the <laughs> Melbourne Cup I think it might have been a story on news.com I saw about yeah that apparently the contract says because seven have also got an interest in uh, racing.com yeah. which has which will keep some digital rights for the Melbourne Cup, but yeah, Bruce McAvaney is not allowed to uh, be on there. But he doesn't actually call the Cup for Seven anyway. He's that's just um, just they're hosting their coverage these days. Uh, but yeah, look, the news: uh, Spicks and Specks reunion in that top five too did fantastic business for uh, the ABC. I don't know, I missed that. Took a lot of people by surprise, I think. So uh, first was Melbourne Cup for Seven, second Seven News Monday to Friday. Spicks and Specks, as James has mentioned, coming in third on the ABC on Sunday. ABC News Sunday, ABC and number five nine. News Monday to Friday night. So that was free to wear. Quick check in on week 45 uh, for subscription television. There we go. They, oh, they'd be very yeah, pleased to see that. The yeah, cricket. Foxtel very happy. I th think the initial audiences for the cricket is doing doing pretty well. They yeah. paid a lot of money for these cricket rights, but uh, you can see the cricket filling those top two spots. Plenty more to come, of course, and of course super supercars and look a movie creeping into the top five there. And look, somewhat embarrassingly, but. I love Pacific Rim. The original is still the best. I remember going to see it in the movies. It was me and about 20 15-year-olds. I mean, no, I was the one that was most happy and excited after this movie. The, the okay. follow-up's OK, but uh, right, okay. If, if you're into still it, still the original. Here. Giant robots fighting uh, sea monsters. Okay. I just don't know what more you could possibly want out of that movie. And then that rather embarrassing insult. We've got to leave it there. Big, big thank you, as always, to, uh, to James Manning from Media Week.